Oscar and Dan, two Swedes who have been exploring the world together since we met in high school. We love seeing new cultures, discovering fantastic spots in nature, and eating lots of delicious vegan food along the way. We started small, saving up during school to go on short trips around Europe before taking a gap year and managing to visit every inhabited continent. For the past three years, our goal has been to visit 100 countries, and we are now so close to the finish line. Country number 98 was the North African nation of Tunisia, and our journey there began at Frankfurt Airport. So we bought our new phones in the US, which means that we can't get physical SIMs anymore. A big, big drawback as a traveler, so we're just trying to prepare the eSIM for Tunisia before we take off. And we have landed in Tunis, and we're officially in country 90. So we're doing a bit of an experiment with the eSIM because since eSIMs are kind of in their infancy right now, the one big inconvenience with it right now is that it's so expensive to get it in like all these apps. But so now we wanted to test if Dan got um, one of the eSIMs that you buy in the app or online. We wanted to compare that to what it's like to get an eSIM once you arrive because we read that Arido should have eSIMs uh, at the airport. So we're gonna try to make a comparison. So easy, oh my god. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And so cheap. About $9 ish for 25 gigs. I feel like right now most people look at Eason's and they're like, ah, oh, that's a bit of an inconvenience. But I feel like in the future, that's definitely one thing that our kids are going to be like, you traveled around the world when you still had to get physical SIM cards? Okay. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like, usually when we go and pick up our rental car, it's like, oh, this Toyota Corolla. No, that's way too fancy for us. We that's get... like the upper end of what we usually this get. This is usually what we get. <laughs> We immediately set out on our drive for just over three hours down to a city called Kairouan. We mainly stopped here to break up the trip down to our actual destination, Tussauds. But this city actually turned out to be a hidden gem. What the hell is our hotel? <laughs> Okay, so everything got very hectic when we had to leave the airport parking, but we made it to our first stop in Tunisia on our road trip, the fourth holiest city in Islam, Cairo. Bonjour, mon amour. Bienvenue à notre hôtel euh, dans Cairo, en Tunisie. I don't know. Okay, come in. <laughs> this. What is very nice tiling in the room and this beautiful tiled bathroom it's already past sunset so i don't know if we're gonna try to go out and explore now or tomorrow morning as of the time i'm recording this i don't know what these are called i'm probably gonna know in a few days or tomorrow maybe they are so good Okay, so this is an amazing loaf of flatbread. We didn't get the name quite yet, but it's filled with all these different herbs, so it's super flavorful. And I'm putting a little bit of harissa on it because I didn't realize how spicy this is. This is a great combo. Fire! So here's a cool thing we've never experienced in any other country we've been to. So yesterday when I paid for the highway tolls, I was so confused because I got some coins back where it said 100, like that. And I was like, what is this? Like a hundred dinar? Which is quite a lot. But I just googled and it turns out that the Tunisian dinar is not divided into a hundred cents, but one thousand cents. But they're not called cents because cent means a hundred, of course. So it's one thousand milli millimes? Millimes? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, one thousand parts to make up one dinar. Oh, good morning good on morning. this amazing day. We are in cut. Okay, we're really struggle busting it with the pronunciation Kairuan, here. I think. Yeah, Kairouan. But since they speak French, some people say it very differently. But it's the fourth holiest city in Islam. So just this year alone, we've been in number two, three, and four. Yeah. This year, <laughs> like, cool. what is what is 2022? It's our section. Yeah, we're gonna see this UNESCO World Heritage Site, the old Medina. So let's go.
It's also kind of crazy to think that this is the fourth holiest city in Islam. But there's so many women here without hijabs. People are dressing quite liberally, which is most certainly not the case in a place like Medina. I don't see many other tourists around. I feel like we always say this, but it really is so nice to be at a truly local market where people aren't like shouting, they're not trying to like drag you in just because you're a tourist. You can just kind of melt in, or not melt in, obviously, we definitely stick out like a sore thumb, but... No one cares about us, it's <laughs> yeah, really nice. Exactly. understand now why this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site because it is so beautiful and tranquil. It's giving like Greece but Arab influence. The difference between this Medina and other similar Medinas we've been to before, I think, is that this is so colorful. Like, usually it's all very, like, m monochrome, which is also nice, but this is, like, a totally different thing. Now I'm getting really bad FOMO. I'm like, oh no, this is so much nicer than expected. I just want to explore all day. And you know what the crazy thing is that, like, when I googled Kairouan, like, I saw nothing of this. Yeah. Like, this is not what was advertised, so I was like, hello? Yeah. <laughs> And of course, the obligatory thing happens. A kind man comes up to us and really wants to show us around. So uh, we're getting a little tour. They taught us that there's one hand on the door there, which means that one family lives there. If there were two hands, so there were two families lived there. So here there's two families. And look at all these doors. How ornate and beautiful. So Karawan is not a big city at all, but the man just told us that there are 300 mosques here, which is just unfathomable. <laughs> That man was really nice. Of course, in the end, he wanted to sell us something, but you know, that's always how it goes. But it was so funny because we were trying to communicate, right? And he spoke a little bit of German, he spoke French, of course, then Arabic, and a tiny bit of English. So it was literally like the four languages mashed together the whole time, and we're like, Okay, just stick to one language. This is just making it even more confusing. <laughs> but he was so friendly and he genuinely seemed to just want to show us around. He wasn't mad at all. We didn't want to buy anything. We gave him a little help as a thank you. And now he guided us toward the Grand Mosque. <laughs> So since this is the fourth holiest city in Islam, we learned a fun fact, which is that if you can't make it to Mecca as a Muslim on a pilgrimage, you can make that up by going here to Kairouan seven times. Seven pilgrimages here equals one to Mecca. All right, after a quick stop in Kairouan, it's time to uh, head on to our real destination, I guess. The main reason that we stopped in Kairouan was actually just to break up the trip because we didn't want to drive for seven hours. But we ended up finding it really, really nice. So it was definitely worth it. But now it's time to continue into the desert. We just left the other road and we're now heading straight into the desert. We still have an hour and a half left. It has been a long day of driving for Oscar. I've been working the whole time. So we both agreed that this is how the setup is gonna be on this drive. And we cannot wait to get where we're staying tonight. We are really truly in the middle of nowhere. Really truly? Really truly. 
For our stay in the small town of Tussauds, we'd been highly recommended to stay at the Anantara Desert Resort, so we'd booked two nights there to see the surrounding sites. Cold towel for you? What? <laughs> yeah, this is a date juice, they said. No. So I think it's vegan, and we have dates and water. And I don't know, but everyone when I came, they were like, welcome, Mr. Dan. Like, they all knew my name. Really... Okay, I don't know why I've never had date juice before, but this could become a new obsession. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Welcome to the most expensive hotel we have stayed at in a very long time. We splurged on our two nights here in Tuzur. Tuzur. Welcome to the bathroom, first of all, which is a very big upgrade from our bathroom yesterday. <laughs> we have two sinks, a bathtub. Look at this. This is... Wow. We have a rainfall shower. Woo! We have a little toilet room. And then in here is our bedroom. Oh, we just have to show you this. It doesn't open very easily, but <laughs> when it opens, it's very nice. <laughs> it's supposed to go further, or is it? Oh my god, I'm so excited to sleep really, really well in this bed. And we have this beautiful chisel. Oh wow, this is so nice. You know, we're gonna be reading here tonight. Hello? All right. Our own little terrace. If you book the cheapest room like we did, you get a garden view, which is what this is. The outer rooms have a Sahara view, but honestly, we drove around and we feel like it's nicer to have this kind of greenery and flowers outside your room than just the completely barren desert. This is not like something like Wadi Rum where there's sand dunes and beautiful red sand. This, for me, is a perfect view. <laughs> Literally everyone we asked before coming to Tunisia about recommendations for where to visit, literally every single person was like, you have to come to this resort. So we decided just to do it, although it is pretty insane what the price point is. But hopefully our stay is gonna be worth it. There's a lot to see around in this area. So starting tomorrow, when we've recovered from this day of five hours in the car, we're gonna get a chance to explore all of that as well. We just walked out and I was like, <gasps> You're gorgeous. It's so calming, it's so quiet. All we hear is the birds. So look at this. Finally food, oh my God, we barely had anything to eat today. Or yesterday. <laughs> Quarter past five. So we have three uh, more local dishes that I haven't really heard about before. One was rak, rakta, rad, radka, radka. This is so good. Best meal in Tunisia so far, by far. But this is insane. The harissa this morning was spicy. This is almost equally spicy. And look how much we have. And it's such a shocker because you're not used to such spicy food in any Arab country. But this is like, whoa. Apparently Tunisia is known for having the spiciest food in the Middle East, North Africa region. So we're definitely um, seeing why that is now. <laughs> Next time on Oscar and Dan. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, here we go. Eight-year-old Dan is freaking out right now. Yes. All of this is fake. This is all fake.